working by candlelight, the witch hunches over a massive tome. Their fingers flip through aged pages as they seek to retrieve the magical information for their ritual. They gather the ingredients written out in their book and sip them into a cauldron. Wisps of smoke begin to dance in the air as the witch speaks the incantation written on their grimoire's eliminated pages, and the magic begins. Welcome and well met everyone, my name is Kaylee Amara the Sea Witch. Today we're talking about the grimoire. The grimoire is quite possibly the most important tool in a witch's possession, but what is a grimoire really? To explain it simply, a grimoire is a collection of magical information intended for a witch or a magical practitioner to reference in their daily practice. For hereditary witches, those who come from families of witches, some grimoires might have been handed down for a number of generations, but for many solitary witches like myself, the grimoire can be deeply personal. After all, the information that each witch decides to keep in their grimoire can vary from witch to witch. We all prioritize different things in our practices. For that reason, the grimoire is often confused with the Book of Shadows, which is a much more deeply personal book, a magical journal, if you will. In a Book of Shadows, you can record your thoughts on your craft, your divinations, whatever you want relating to your magic. But here's a hot take from me. If you want, there's no reason your grimoire can't serve both purposes. You can keep your grimoire and your book of shadows in the same book, if you want. Even if you intend to hand your grimoire to a child or mentee, your magical insights are no less valuable than any other magical information. But that's just my opinion. But we're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit. So, say you're a brand new witch. And now you're being told by some VTuber on the internet that you should keep a grimoire. Or maybe you're a witch that's been practicing a long time, like I was, and found the process of making a grimoire overwhelming and intimidating. Why would you even want a grimoire anyway? As I've said before, there is so much information to be found in books, online sources, YouTube videos, you name it. If you could just type what you need into Google and get a response, or go to your bookshelf full of witchy books and flip through them until you find your answer, why would you keep a grimoire? See, the reality is that you don't necessarily have to keep a grimoire. Just like any other magical tool, you don't have to have every magical tool that is listed on a list of tools that witches need. But... Keeping all of the magical information you learn from your outside sources in one place allows you to make an incredibly personal resource based on your own magical journey. The process of making a grimoire is a sort of ritual in and of itself. You're committing yourself to the practice with every stroke of the pen against the page. It's quite possibly one of the most meditative experiences I've ever had. And if you're the kind of person that learns things by writing them down, keeping a grimoire would be extremely useful for you. But do you need to buy a massive leather bound tome? No, absolutely not. What works for you, works best for you. Maybe you're in an unsafe living situation where having a big, obvious, magical book will draw far too much attention. Maybe you just don't have a lot of space to work with, or you can't afford to spend a lot of money on a fancy book. I'm here to tell you that that's totally okay. Your grimoire can take any shape you can imagine. Your grimoire can be a plain college-ruled notebook. It can be a series of Google Docs. If you want a physical book, but you're worried about messing it up, go with an old three-ring binder so you can move pages around. You can even put a cover on it. Write your spells and correspondences on old-fashioned recipe cards and put them in a Rolodex. Your grimoire can be a Tumblr blog or a bunch of audio recordings on your computer or whatever you want. The sky's the limit. 
that being said, I personally enjoy the aesthetics of a book like this. This grimoire is brand new. Now, I did have a previous book that I had been working in for a long time, but since I came out and changed my name after I began it, it has some outdated information about me in it, and it's kind of throwing off my whole magical vibe. Uh, that being said, though, I don't regret my time with this old book. Like I said, the time filling out your grimoire is time well spent, and I wouldn't take it back for anything, even if it isn't meant for me now. This new book suits me really well, though, and I'm looking forward to filling it out. But my gods... The empty pages, they're intimidating, aren't they? Right now, they're so full of potential. I mean, I want it to be perfect. I want it to suit its purpose. I want it to look nice and organized. I want the information in these pages to be clear to me. But where do I start? Well, it's kind of what this series is about. I've called this the Sea Witch's Grimoire not only because we're talking about witchcraft, but also because with every video, I'll be adding more and more to this book and discussing all the information that I'm adding as we go. In this tome, I will write all kinds of things. Correspondences, spells, rituals, invocations. Since I'm using a book like this that has a set number of pages, I need to plan out my pages very carefully to make sure that I have plenty of room for everything I want to write. Maybe I'll plan it out in a spreadsheet? This notebook has 200 pages, so what do I want on each page? How many pages should each section take? And how many pages do I want to leave blank for additional information to be added later? This is something I can plan out at this stage, however... I have ADHD, and I'm very poor at planning things, so I'm going to try not to get too bogged down in perfectionism. There can always be multiple volumes of a grimoire if I run out of room in this book. I can always add ribbons, bookmarks, or tabs to pages to easily reference different things if it isn't organized perfectly. This isn't a book meant to be published. This is for your personal magical practice. Sometimes there's magic to be found in the little flaws. Bob Ross called them happy accidents for a reason, after all. All right. No fear. I'm going to get started on planning my grimoire, but before we actually start writing in it, there's one very important thing that we have to do. Next time, I'm going to be talking about magical cleansing and why it is a crucial part of any working. Until then, take care of yourselves, everyone, because you deserve it. And I'll see you soon. Blessed be.